Flight 229, you're clear for takeoff. Just like a flight plan, you have to know where you're going and how you will get there when you plan for retirement. Let Ryan Fleming help you chart out a course for your retirement with his intimate knowledge of financial planning and the airline industry. It's time for the Pilot's Advisor. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the Pilot's Advisor. I'm Walter Storholt alongside Ryan Fleming, Financial Advisor at Fleming Financial Group, serving you worldwide, but currently based out of the St. Louis area. You can find us online at retirepilots.com, and we'll give you other ways to contact Ryan if you have questions about finances, retirement, and planning for it all. Got a great show on the way today. We're going to be talking about unreasonable requests. Perhaps you're getting ready for the holidays, and you're handling some unreasonable requests from family members of what they want the holidays to look like or how much food you're expected to cook for the amount of people coming to visit you. Well, we're going to talk about some unreasonable requests in the financial and retirement planning landscape as well, and how Ryan deals with those things, handles those things, and how it impacts the retirement picture. But before we get to all of that, Ryan, hello. Hope you're doing well. What's up? Hey, Walter. How are you doing? Are you guys and your family getting ready for Thanksgiving? We are. We're going to keep it simple this year. So we're just going to do like a little get together with Connie's folks uh, one day and then uh, like uh, before Thanksgiving. And then on Thanksgiving Day, we're going to go down to the beach or maybe the day before Thanksgiving and visit my folks. And uh, that's kind of actually going back to what our tradition used to be when I was growing up. My family, uh, the three of us would always go down to the beach. And that was sort of our thing. We always had sort of a tight knit, small Thanksgiving tradition. And so we're kind of be getting back to that a little bit, which will be fun. Yeah, I think family traditions are amazing. It, it makes it harder and harder because I think people have moved away from their hometown and all over the place. But this year for us is going to be nice because my mom actually moved down south to Destin, Florida, and she lives right by my sister. Oh, very so nice. Now, yeah. So now we get to go there for Thanksgiving and, and spend the holidays with my whole side of the family. And then we usually go to Carrie's parents house in denver for christmas well that's pretty sweet that'll be a fun uh, back and forth between the two different areas and uh yeah you've got some a little bit of travel ahead of you now yeah, it makes it a little bit easier to fill all the squares when they're they're located all in one spot yeah i i guess you got a little bit longer trip on your hands this year down to uh florida versus when you were in charleston but that's all right not too much further right well, it's actually amazing i'm we're out of the st louis area here now uh, right by scott air force base and I would never normally fly Allegiant. I just would not do it. But out of St. Louis, we have to connect almost anywhere, whether it's Chicago, Atlanta, Charlotte. Um, however, Allegiant Airlines flies right from Scott Air Force Base direct to VPS, which is Destin Fort Walton Beach Airport. Is that right? So, oh, Very it's amazing cool. and cheap. That's awesome. Well, there you go. Uh, so you will make your bend your rule to uh, to to do that one flight since it's so convenient. I guess so. I guess so. When those things work out like that, uh, I think it makes the discount airline experience a little bit better, right? When it's just when it makes your life that much easier, worth it's, going that route. Yeah, it's it's worth it. Uh, not having any leg room, but not having to connect through a busy airport for me it takes some of the pain out of it. So yeah, I, I'd absolutely agree with that. You trade the pain in the knees for the pain in the neck. There you go. There you go. <laughs> or, and I'm or, sure, or I'm sure a lot of our listeners will be traveling for the holidays too. It'll be interesting to see how. The, especially Christmas time is going to be with these major airlines because, of course, you know we have a lot of uh, pilots as clients at this uh, off this podcast, and it, it appears that a lot of the pilots are not going to fly extra and are taking a stance. Yeah, we're seeing uh, all sorts of different industries take stands and not wanting to, uh, you know, participate. Sick outs, all sorts of interesting things going on. They've. Uh, in my local area, Ryan, recently, there have been lots of headlines of, uh, for a while, it was the bus drivers said, there's a bunch of us who are sick and the rest of us aren't picking up extra routes. And so, no, we just aren't going to drive the bus today. So they took the kids to school and then they went on strike. And so there was just a madhouse of people trying to get off of work to go pick up their children from school. And all these kids were stuck at school. And now it's the lunch, uh, the lunchtime rush. Uh, cafeteria workers are, are on strike and there's all sorts of people scrambling to try and feed their kids after they went to school thinking there was going to be lunch and then there's not. And uh, Well, it's, it's funny that madness. we're talking about this with unreasonable requests because flying airplanes around the world has been a, a very, very painful for the past year and a half, as, you, as I'm sure you can imagine. 
and and pilots American pilots Airlines. never get unreasonable requests or flight attendants <laughs> unreasonable requests from travelers. I've never seen a news story about something like that. Absolutely not. But but with all these pilot or all these airlines currently are up for new contracts, and I can assure you the pilots have been through a lot of pain over the last year. And I think a lot of us is we're negotiating new contracts and. Nobody wants, I think, uh, you know, we're not going to fly any extra until we get the contract we deserve. Well, that's a great point. And so, yeah, I mean, I think we're all familiar with uh, handling unreasonable requests. And I know none of our listeners are guilty of making such requests, Ryan. Well, oh, absolutely not. No, no pilot ever makes unreasonable no, requests. No, no. They're, they're almost like uh, red carpet actresses and actors, you know, where it's like, hey, I'm not showing up unless I have a bottle of Dom and I'm picked <laughs> up by Bentley and XYZ. Oh, uh, that's uh, that's great. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Right. They're only ever on the other side of the equation where they're handling the unreasonable requests. Uh, but no, great segue, Ryan. You did my job for me making the segue into today's conversation. So yeah, let's explore from the financial realm uh, some unreasonable requests and what maybe proper expectations should look like instead. And I'm just curious if you face these things from time to time, how you handle it how it impacts the planning, all that kind of stuff. So what do you do when somebody comes in to meet with you and they have this kind of unreasonable expectation of wanting bigger and bigger returns on their money, but they want little to no risk? They want to have their cake and eat it too. Well, that's funny you said that because pilots all want to have their cake and they want to eat it too. They want maximum returns and no risk at all and no downside potential either. So even if the market's going negative, they want positive returns. So that's, that's the expectation there. And the funny part is in the industry, if you're not complaining, that means that you're not actually a pilot. So all pilots complain, no matter how good it is, you have to complain. So um, bringing that back to the financial side of things with bigger returns and little to no risk. In nearly every situation, having the opportunity to have more return or being more aggressive in a portfolio, you have to take on more risk. The good news is you don't have to do those things, but you need to understand the risk you're taking. We can get the possibility for more return, but but risk is inherent in that. The risk and that volatility is actually what gives us our return. So either you know, you're young enough that you know that you have many, many years to retirement and you can handle the ups and downs of the market, or if you're getting closer to retirement, you probably can't swing for the fences to get those huge returns. That probably shouldn't be your priority. We should start, as I, I talk about, pulling the throttles back a little bit and start shooting to, to hit the singles and doubles consistently um, because the math in retirement, which is going to be for another show, uh, you want consistency of returns versus so much volatility and, and a higher uh, average of returns as you get closer to retirement. Are people usually receptive when you kind of have to pull back the reins a little bit on that unreasonable request and kind of set those expectations more properly? Well, I think I think it's more of a conversation of how the market works. And you can get those returns, but you are taking on more risk where if we're pulling the throttles back, we have to lower those expectations of returns too. You can't compare. You got to always compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. You can't go, hey, well, my buddy's getting 25% return on his portfolio when he's in an aggressive portfolio that's you know very speculative in nature and you might have a portfolio because you're retiring next year where you're trying to to guarantee and save the principal going forward so you got to make sure that you are talking about similar things well hey there we hope you're enjoying listening to the pilot's advisor today just wanted to take a quick moment from the show to remind you that if you have any questions ever about what ryan talks about on the program need any assistance with your financial planning, need some guidance to get to and through retirement, or whatever financial questions might be on your mind, don't ever hesitate to reach out. The simple way to get in touch with Ryan is to pick up the phone and call or text 843-475-3038. Again, that's 843-475-3038. You can also find Ryan online at FlemingFG.com. That's FlemingFG.com. And as always, we put contact information to get in touch with Ryan in the description or the show notes section of the program. So just check it out on whatever app you're using, and it's easy to get in touch with Ryan. All right, now back to the show. Now, do you ever have people come to you, Ryan, and they're trying to get their fees reduced? Can you reduce like your fees for working with me? Is that a reasonable expectation for for that to be kind of negotiable and having wiggle room there in terms of of the fees that somebody pays for money management and that sort of thing? 
to an extent. I mean, if I have a client that's got, you know, you know, a couple million dollars or a larger account like that, I think it's something that can be negotiated. However, there's a reason why most advisors will not talk to someone unless they have, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars in assets, because it's not worth all the time that you have to put in and all the things that you're going to do for a client and getting, you know, basically losing money doing it. So there's an in-between there. Many advisors, they have management fees and there's a sliding scale. I always say that the industry average is between one and one and two percent. And but yes, you know, we talk about like buying in bulk or, or reduced fees because of how much we're going to get, like the, the Costco effect. And I think once you're over a million dollars, there's certain a fee should be reduced or, or it could be a little bit more negotiable at that point. But, you know, we, we don't do this for free. And there's a lot of work that goes into it. There's a lot of work that goes into engineering a portfolio, rebalancing a portfolio, and, and taking the individual time it takes to, to really know your client and what their situation is. So, uh, Reducing fees is something that can be a, a conversation piece, but it has to be a reasonable conversation. Yeah, it's like there's different business models out there for advisors, right? Some who take commission on individual products they sell, others that are based around a percentage of assets managed. Some just charge uh, like a high flat fee for a one-time plan or a yearly fee that's more like a subscription. I mean, there's all sorts of different business models that are out there because ultimately that's what you guys are in is running a business, helping people manage their money and get ready for retirement and that sort of thing. So uh, you have to make money to stay in business. So that's going to be part of the situation that you well, that you run into. Well, absolutely. And it has to be a win-win relationship. And I've done some webinars on this you definitely probably want to find a fee-based advisor for multiple reasons. They're not trying to sell you a product. They're not trying to earn a big commission. So they're actually going to invest your money and do it in a way that is the, you know, as, or even being a fiduciary, which if I work with you, I'm a fiduciary where I'm legally obligated to act in your best interest. So we're actually investing your money in the way that's best for you and not just trying to get some big commission. Um, so that's definitely something that's a red flag that you want to want to look for when you're trying to find an advisor. And nobody in this industry is running a charity. You get what you pay for. I've had conversations with prospects where they're so worried about an expense ratio or a fee that, you know, you realize that the relationship's not going to go anywhere. And what I like to explain to people is if I can increase your return over the long term by 1%, that's your break even point. And so if I can show you that and prove that to you, that's your break even point. It makes, you know, would you be willing to pay 1% to get an extra 5% in return? And the answer to that question should be yes every single time. If you have any questions about something we talk about on today's show, you can reach out to Ryan and the team at uh, the Pilots Advisor and Fleming Financial Group by calling or texting him at 843 475 3038. 843 475 3038. 38 or go online to retirepilots.com and we'll put Ryan's contact information in the description or the show notes section of today's program. Handling unreasonable requests. We're walking through them in the financial world on today's episode. Another one, Ryan, how can I get out of paying taxes on the money that's in my IRAs and 401ks? I think people are exposed to a lot of you know, tax-free talk when it comes to, you know, marketing in the financial world. We've done episodes here about how to try and live a tax-free retirement and that sort of thing. But uh, do some unreasonable expectations get set in the midst of all that? Well, absolutely. And if you're, if you're not talking about taxes with investment and retirement planning, you're wrong. Um, having a plan starting early on is going to make make your life in retirement that much easier. It's really sad when we get prospects or clients that are you know approaching retirement and they haven't even discussed or strategized on how taxes are going to affect their retirement. Um, before I get into that though, Walter, I, I wanted to say one other point when we were talking about the fee the fee game before. And Vanguard actually did a study, and I'm willing to send this to you. We could put it in the show notes or send it to any of our listeners. But Vanguard actually did a study, and what they came up with is if you're if you're working with an advisor and for multiple multiple reasons. An advisor is probably going to give you at least 3% more return by just having an advisor working with you versus not. And so Vanguard as a company actually prefers, if you're going to invest in Vanguard funds, and this is what the study was based off of, if you're by yourself, you're a do-it-yourself for investing in Vanguard funds versus 
an individual that's working with a financial advisor invested in Vanguard funds, there was at, at, at a minimum that 3% difference just by working with an advisor. So fees are definitely a conversation, but you need to understand the value that a, a, a financial advisor is going to bring to the table for, for a client out there. Have you ever wanted to learn more about the academic approach to investing and saving and planning for retirement that Ryan talks about here on The Pilot's Advisor? Well, if so, go visit pilotsadvisor.com, pilotsadvisor.com. You can watch a quick webinar on the academic approach to investing. It'll show you how not to speculate and gamble with your money. It's all based on Nobel Prize winning research. It only takes about 10 minutes to get through the video and watch it. Going to be worth your time, I promise you. Go check it out right now, pilotsadvisor.com. It's a webinar that covers that academic approach to investing, pilotsadvisor.com. All right, back to the show. Last but not least, one other unreasonable request I want to make sure we cover here. Can you just do all this for me? Like, I don't want to have to do anything, Ryan. Can you just, just boom, you do it all for me. And that might sound like <laughs> music to somebody's ears, right? But, but what's the real story when somebody kind of has that request for you? It depends. It depends. No, actually, yes and no. So pilots are very, this is a, this is a request I get a lot. And I love it if it's at the point where somebody trusts me enough to tell them what to do and help them, help me get them set, set up going forward. However, when it comes to retirement planning and building out a retirement income plan, this is a, a, a relationship where we have to talk back and forth quite a bit. So Pilots loathe the idea of planning for retirement, and they just want an advisor to do it for them, obviously. And uh, we've even, you know, I, I get it all the time. Yeah, just do it. Just, just, and I can't actually say what one Marine said to me that I can't say on radio, but I think it's hilarious. Danny Benavidez, if, if you're out there, Speedy, uh, I, lo I love a, your, your way of retirement planning. But to have a customized retirement plan that is, you know, specific to you and your situation, you have to participate. You know, obviously I'm here to help you out and make right decisions, um, but I can't decide everything for you. I need to know what your budget looks like. I need to know what you want your retirement to look like. I need to know how much income you need month to month. And these are all things that take, take a, a conversation. And I always tell people, all my clients, we buy e-money for them, okay? And it's an aggregate software that's very powerful. But like anything else in life, you get what you put into it. And the more that you put into it, and the more that you put into your relationship with your financial advisor, typically the more you're going to get out of it in the long run and the, and the better retirement you're going to have. Very good. It is a uh, opportunity if you've listened to today's show or any past episodes of The Pilot's Advisor and you have questions about something you've heard or something we haven't covered or want to talk specifics about your own financial plan, Ryan is always there for you. You can set up a time to chat and ask those questions and begin the planning process by calling or texting him at 843-475-3038. 843-475-3038, or you can go online to retirepilots.com. And something new for you uh, listeners to the podcast out there, Ryan has a great new resource that he has developed that's specifically for airline pilots. It's the Retirement Toolkit, the Autopilot Retirement Toolkit. Ryan, tell us about what you've put together here and what pilots can expect with this uh, toolkit that you've uh, assembled. Yeah, I've, I've been getting so many requests over the years that I finally put a toolkit together and it's absolutely free. All you got to do is go sign up and I'll send it off to you. And what it has, it has a couple of the books I've written specific to pilots. It also has some tax strategies that we work hand in hand with Pilot Tax, Zach Smith at Pilot Tax, who they've been handling uh, and working with pilots for over 30 years. And there's some tax strategies that I send off to you. And lastly, there's some information on putting your 401k on autopilot. And so basically what we have is you can hit the easy button and you don't have to stay up at night anymore. We can actually work with you and help you build that 401k that is going to be the, the major part of your retirement picture. And uh, this toolkit that we send out gives you information on all of that. So if you want more information about escaping the Wall Street casino, putting your retirement on autopilot, and want to just learn a little bit more about what it's like to work with Ryan and to put together a solid financial plan, especially one that is geared toward the needs and goals of pilots everywhere. Um, we're talking about pilots who have worked in the past with the major carriers, uh, FedEx, Delta, American Airlines, Southwest, United, 
Um, they've all gotten this toolkit and have interacted with uh, with Ryan before. But you're going to get those books, The Pilot's Advisor, Diffuse, another one of the books that uh, Ryan wrote, as well as different lessons on all sorts of great topics. It's all for free and available to you as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Just check the show notes or the description of today's show, and you're going to see a link to pick up your toolkit. And just go there, click Send the Toolkit, put in your information where Ryan can mail it to you, and you'll be able to get all of those resources Uh, in your fingertips within a couple of days. So very helpful resource, lots of good information there. So if you're an airline pilot and you want to know how to put your retirement on autopilot, check out Ryan's Autopilot Retirement Toolkit right now. Again, just go to the show notes, check the description of today's show, and you'll see a link in there under the resources section where you can uh, you know, go ahead and put in your info and get that toolkit. Ryan, thanks for preparing that for folks. And uh, is it unreasonable to ask you to stick around and record another 30 episodes today. Let's just record all the way straight through Thanksgiving. Can we Can we do that? Yeah, let's get it knocked out. I'm ready to go on. <laughs> Sounds like an unreasonable request, doesn't it? Absolutely. You, you're <laughs> losing me in a couple minutes. That's right. That's right. Uh, go eat some turkey, uh, some good stuff for Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll be back with some fresh episodes in December, my friend. Thanks a lot, Walter. Happy Thanksgiving to all our listeners, and we look forward to seeing you guys after the holidays. You've been listening to The Pilot's Advisor, featuring Ryan Fleming, a financial advisor at Fleming Financial Group, serving clients worldwide, but based out of Charleston, South Carolina. If you have any questions for Ryan on what we've talked about on today's show, maybe a future topic idea, or want to talk more about getting a complimentary review of your financial plan, here's the best ways to get in touch. You can go online to the website, FlemingFG.com. That's FlemingFG.com. You can also email Ryan. It's simply ryan at flemingfg.com. Or you can call or text to get in touch. 843-475-3038 is the number. That's 843-475-3038. Thanks for listening to The Pilot's Advisor. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcasting apps. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, in many more locations. So whatever app you like to use, search for the Pilots Advisor podcast today and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, investment, or legal advice. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.